Bonjour. Hello. Hi. So today we're talking about my least favorite books and they're not in any order per se because I didn't really read a lot of books this year that I just despise, but if we do come across any of those, I promise you, I will tell you. You will know. Um, but really, I just didn't have a very good reading year this year in 2022. I read a lot of books. I read the most books I've ever read in one year this year, so that was fantastic. But content-wise, no. Nah. Not a single thing, uh, well, aside from a few, that I will talk about in my next video. So, wait for that. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to go down my Goodreads uh, reading challenge and uh, talk about the ones that stick out to me as being not very good. So let's get into it. Also, hi, my name is Madison. I post videos that are reading related, writing related, video editing related, language learning related. I don't have a specific theme. The theme is my life and my interests in my life. So, let's get going. Let's get this going. You know, also I'm sorry the Christmas tree's not on. I don't want to. I don't want to go down and plug it in. But the but the but the little gnomes. The little gnomes are on. Are they are the elves? Are you an elf or are you a gnome? So the first thing that sticks out to me is actually the Emperor of Nihon Ya, whatever, by John Flanagan. And I have to say, after the first book, these, this entire series makes itself onto this list. It is a 10-book series with two spin-off series that are also, like, six books long. And I can't do it, okay? The first book I really enjoyed. I gave the first book a four-star. I liked Will as a character. I liked the plot. It was funny. The humor was very, very well done and very good. And I liked the reason that John Flanagan had written it. Well, apparently other people liked it too, and John Flanagan expanded the series past what I think should have been a duology to 10 books, and I have not liked a single one since. I don't like Evelyn. I absolutely hate her. And Cassandra, I hate that name. So I, I, don't, I don't like Evelyn. I don't like Cassandra, obviously, and I don't like her name, so that doesn't help her. And then the, the 10th book, I think, is just... Okay, spoiler if you want to read this series... John Flanagan can't kill anybody of actual character. He cannot kill anyone. If there is a main character, they will live for the entire series. And that is what happened in this book. There are several moments where people could have died, but you knew he wasn't going to kill anybody because John Flanagan does not have a trigger finger. He has nothing. Nada. Ante. Not a thing. Ante et. It was just... I don't, I don't like it. Um, so this series brings me fury because it could have been good. I'm not reading the spinoffs. By the end of this, my granny and I were just so exhausted of reading the same book, the same series. And my granny and I like series. Don't get us wrong. Well, to an extent. But this one, I just, I was not a fan of. And so let's see if I can find something else. I gave most of the books in the series a three star because they were average and I wasn't superly reading them. I was skimming a lot of them, but not my favorite. Ooh, okay. Here's one. Next on the list is Sherlock Holmes and the Shadwell Shadows by James Lovegrove. Talk about James Lovegrove hyping himself up in that prologue. That was the worst. That was such a stupid prologue, y'all. It was so bad. Basically, the book starts off with a letter from Joan Watts, J John Watson. John Watson? His name's not Joan. That's an elementary. Um, what's his name? What is... Watson's first name. I don't know. It starts off with the male version of Joan Watson um, writing a letter to the people who are reading the book and he's like, I have entrusted this series of three novels to that were written by Sherlock Holmes to my good friend James Lovegrove. I leave him with these books because he is a trustful man, he is a fantastic author, and I know that when I'm dead, he won't publish them. And I'm just like, what the heck is this? Why does it exist? It didn't need to exist. And there's like magic or some crap in this book. My granny gave it a one star. 
I gave it a one star, and I also put in my review, my review was one line, and it was, shoot me, comma, please. That's how I feel about the book. It was so stupid. My granny and I just didn't have anything else to read, and we wanted to know how it ended. The ending was, it was also ridiculous, so that was not very good either. Ooh, another sequel. So here we have... Um, the Future King by James Riley. This is the third book in the Revenge of Magic series, I believe. Yeah, Revenge of Magic is what the series called. And I loved the first book. I gave the first book a four star. I really, really enjoyed it. I loved Fort as a character, and I liked the story. I liked the magic aspect. I love fantasy, and I love magic. And I this is a series that I have wanted to read because I believe Jen from Jen's Bookshelf, she talked about the first book in one of her videos ages ago she's she does not have a review on goodreads for it so that's why i'm like unsure but i swear i first heard of this book from her and i also really want to read jame riley's other series the story thieves so i was just really excited to read this book and i really liked the first one afterwards it tumbles downhill and this book is so it's just crazy. It's really stupid. It like the stuff that happens doesn't make any sense. The characters themselves do really idiotic things and the entire time we're just wondering like why aren't you telling anybody that this is going on? What is happening? It's just Does this shirt wash me out? <laughs> That's not that bad. That's... That's off topic of the book, but like I just like peek up at the viewfinder and I find myself very pale, which I am a very pale person, but still. Okay, next up we have The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, which I guess this could technically be the worst book I read this year because I feel so indifferent about it that I can't give it a rating. It has, I read this book back in February and I have, ne I've never given it a rating. I just simply don't know how I feel about it. I don't like it and I was really disappointed in it but I feel like I can't give it like lower than a three star because I don't feel that much hatred and despise towards it but I also can't give it a three star because I don't feel like it was just a meh book. I think it was just I just I guess it was just a meh book but it just wasn't a good meh. It was a what is going on meh. So I feel like I can't give that book a rating. I did not like it. I'm very disappointed. In fact, I donated my copy of the book to the library because the library's copy of the book gets checked out so frequently. And I'm just like, no, you're making a mistake. There's so many better ones you could choose from. And yeah, so that's that. Those are like all of them. But I guess we'll do some honorable mentions for the DNFs of this year because I do have some opinions on those because I DNFed them. As you can see, like I said, my reading year wasn't super, super good because I didn't have a lot of books I didn't like and a lot of books I didn't love. I had a lot of meh books. Maybe 2023 will be a better year. Let's talk about some books that are just honorably mentioned because I didn't finish them, but I did DNF them. We have Isolate by L.E. Modest Jr. This book is about a mystery because a high-ranking government official got killed with, sus like, with, like, shaky reasons. Suspicious, suspicious reasons? I don't, I can't think of... I can't think of the phrase right now. English is failing me. But he was suspiciously, he just died with suspicious causes. There we go. And eventually, the two main characters were supposed to become, like, suspects in the murder, I believe. I've never, I didn't get that far. Because I was, like, 70 pages into this book. And there are 350, roughly, words per page. The font is very small. It is a very fat book. Okay, but I'm 70 pages into this book, and all I'm getting is this man's day-to-day -day life. And it wasn't even that that bothered me, because for a little bit, I can, like, get it down. Like, I get it. His life is very monotonous. It's very boring. But then, there's 70 pages, probably, like, 50,000 words. Like, that's how small the font was. So we were a big, fat way through this book, um, word count-wise, not page count-wise. And they were still doing their day-to-day -day life. There was not any, like, the murder we 
going to get to see any murder investigations, any murder mystery wasn't introduced by then, the characters weren't suspects, nobody that had been introduced was a suspicious character, it was just very boring, and the politics are just, I like, I like politics, okay, don't get me wrong but not this one. I don't know if political fantasy isn't my thing. I've yet to read Jade City, which I really want to read. So I don't know if it's like political fantasy I don't like. I'm not sure, but yeah, I DNF'd it. I was so excited though, because I had uh, book one and book two my library has. And I was like, I have both of them, brought, I brought both of them home because I accidentally checked out book two. I did not know it was a sequel. So I brought both of them home and I was like, okay, I can read this book and then pick up book two. I have both of them. Let's just say that was not happening. It did not happen. Another honorable mention we have is Lord of Horses by H.L. Mac. Marlin. I gave the first book in the series a four star, read it in 24 hours. I gave this book a no rating, DNF stamp, and I read it for like an hour, got like 30 pages into it, and I just wasn't vibing. There were a lot of like you could spot the setups for certain relationships or a relationship um, in the book from the very beginning, and the male character was very childish and seemingly like toxic because she did not want his like girlfriend, fiance, lover, mate to go off with the love interest from the second book, which yeah, he tried to kill her, yada yada yada, get over yourself dude. But he wouldn't let her go off and she's like, dude, I can take care of myself. It's not that big of a deal. Like, I'm trying to save my land and this town I live in. And he's like, but you gotta let me come with you. And it was just, it was not turning into be a good book. And I was not vibing with it. I was so upset because I could have read it, like, in one sitting. That's what I imagined. And it did not happen. So, yeah. See, even my DNFs, I'm very meh about. Um, I read, let's see if I can, the graphic novels right over there for, I read one of them for the Troll Hunter series, and I read that to completion, it was 70 pages, though I kind of wanted to DNF it because it was not very loyal to the source material it was replicating. Basically, after Callista dies, aka Dea, after Dea, after Dea dies, Drawl suddenly is the Troll Hunter, or not Drawl, um, Joel's dad, I can't think of his name, is suddenly a troll hunter, and as we know, that's not right, especially because Uncar, the unfortunate, is not even there, and Blinky trained him, so we at least needed one more person, and he is the troll hunter for like 10 hours. So, it was not very faithful, that was pretty disappointing, but I guess it was one of my least favorites. So yeah, this video does not have a lot of hatred in it like my, most of them do, because I did not have a lot of hatred towards any of these books, even the ones I DNF'd. Um, and it's sad. Some of them, I feel like sometimes I can go off on a book for so long because I disliked it so much and I hated it so much. But this year, I don't have any of those. And I'm upset about it because if you don't know me, I love to rant. I love, I love talking about stuff I don't like. So I'm upset that I have nothing to do for that for you guys. But um, I guess we'll end this video here. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys liked it. Did you guys get any books this year that you can talk about, rant about? If so, tell me in the comment section. Hey, feel free to rant about them. And check out my next video that will have my best books of the year. There are, it's a little bit more of an interesting video because if you like to see people gush about their favorite books, then I promise you, I do that there. And yeah, yeah I'm going to go. I love you all so, so, so much. And I'll see you all in my next video. Adios. Goodbye. Hey, Dua. And hey, don't forget, I'm still a freaky bulldozer. Mwah.